Okay guys, welcome to this uh, training course on resin printing. So what I want to do is over these first, uh, this first section, I want to actually show you some of the problems that I had when I was using the Photon S, that's the Anycubic. But I'm guessing that what I'm telling you will work for the standard Photon as well. Uh, lots of people have had problems with uh, print sticking to the FEP and um, exposure problems, these sort of things, and also um, what you need to get started. Because uh, when you first buy a Photon S and you get the little pack and everything that comes with it, you think, yeah, I can start printing. And fundamentally, you can. But um, you do need some extra stuff. Um, you need some cleaner you need certain filters and things so i'm just going to share with you i've only had this printer for about a week now and i printed some really decent stuff but when i was first starting the first couple of days i pretty much had all the problems that you had and i was searching around in the internet for answers and i located those answers and I tried lots of different things and finally I managed to get it all working and I have an understanding. So I took a bit of a baptism of fire when it came to actually doing resin printing. So I want to share those things that I've learned with you guys. And for this course, I want to keep adding to it. So I've got a gray resin um, arriving pretty soon. So I'm gonna be trying the test with the same settings as the standard green, which you get with the model, which I haven't finished using yet, the standard green. So um, that's what I'm gonna be working with initially. But I'm gonna build on this course because I'm sure I'm gonna have other problems and then I'm gonna to have to overcome them. I'm gonna show you how you can overcome them. I'm just gonna show you what is actually happening. You know, what, what is resin printing? How is it actually working? Because understanding how the printing method works will help you in being able to understand what you need to do and what's going on. Lots of people ask the question, you know, oh, can you give me the exposure time for this? Can you give me for whatever? And uh, looking for those answers and they might use the same settings and it might not work. Um, the reason it might not work is, uh, as is mentioned many times, maybe your bed is not level. Uh, maybe your FEP is not tight enough on the model. Uh, maybe the room temperature is um, too low, too high. You know, these things, it's very, um, it's not like, you know, people get a 3D printer and they think, uh, okay, I've got this printer, I can print anything now. And uh, we're not that far ahead with the technology. It's coming on, uh, but it's not like uh, a coffee machine, you know? It's not like you're gonna get a perfect cup of coffee every time from a coffee machine that's dishing something out. Uh, we're dealing with photosensitive resins. Uh, those resins may vary when you get them, although they try to keep them consistent. There could be uh, a bad batch of resin. You know, you might not have shaken the resin well enough to allow all of the photosensitive particles to be through the whole resin. You know, things like this. So people that leave resin for a long time, they pour it in. Um, other things is like you might leave the res resin in the vat. Uh, I'm going to be telling you from my point of view what I don't do. You know, I don't leave my resin in the vat. I, I don't even leave it for a day. You know, I do a print, I clean it out, I set my next print up, and I refill it, start afresh each time. This works with me. Getting regimented in the way that you're setting up for print is really important. And being uh, lazy about cleaning your vat every time, I think is a case of just being lazy. And then to actually do that and then post that your print hasn't worked is a lot of the times down to you. So I'm being harsh, but it, it's the truth, you know, that is the truth of the matter. So uh, I'm gonna give you my experience with this. Um, I'm an expert in um, using ZBrush. So uh, for the course, I'm actually gonna show you how I created this little uh, vampire girl, which I've created. I've actually put clothes on her, so I'm gonna show you how to do that as well. And uh, with this particular model in mind, I am 
showing you also I'm going to show you how to cut a model up and do it in pieces and what you should do how you should how you should set it up in tutorbox um, for supports uh, but I'm also going to show you how to do printing that is supportless yes supportless so um, I have a model here which is the same model and this little model here is completely done without any supports okay so there was supports under here just to keep it level with the bed because there's not enough material so there was a flat plane of supports here but that was pulled straight off and i think there was maybe one support in here for the back of the hair um, which again was pulled off very quickly but minimal supports probably maybe four um, quite a few underneath but there was about maybe three or four uh, on the model but actually I think it would work without any sports whatsoever because of the way I've designed it so we'll be talking about that if you want to take the other part of the course um, that will show you about how to create something like this so if you like this model and this is the sort of stuff you want to do like miniatures then stay tuned for that but the beginning this section is all about what I found works with me and my setup and how I can keep things really nice and clean um, by using certain things and also a key to um, using things that are reusable so you don't have to keep buying things like filters and these sort of stuff so also keeping your environment clean smell free because the the cleaner is the um, the IPA cleaner that we're using is very very smelly um, I was really surprised I heard all these rumors about the resin printer being a really smelly mucky business but actually when I used the green um, the actual smell was actually quite nice quite liked it now I'm going to be using the plant-based resins and um, that are much low odor I'm going to be testing those out um, in uh, in this course in this section I'll be adding to this section more stuff as I go along so I'm gonna the idea of the course is keep all the photon stuff with what I'm testing in this section and any of the workshops like the vampire girl that you saw are in another section so every job that I'm doing will be in a section after that but the photon area is in there now the reason I've done that is because if I decide to buy another resin printer like a large format then the, like the Phenom, I might well do another section on that um, printer in its own right. Now, for you guys that have followed me, you've probably done my Goblin War Chariot, which was done with the FDM printer, um, the plastic filament printer, uh, GTEC uh, i3 Pro B. So I um, I did a whole course on how to break a Goblin War Chariot up and put it into pieces. And that's pretty, you know, that 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 methodology that I use in that course uh, will actually be, can be actually used in the resin uh, printer for sure so you might want to take that course I've also done a whole anatomy course as well which shows you how to do things like the vampire girl um, because this although I'm showing you how to do it now I'm not going over details I'm not going over all the muscles and all this all the bones and la bony landmarks and proportions I'm just getting on the sculpting it so if you guys are having a real trouble and you really want to do miniatures I really suggest that you take my anatomy course now it's quite expensive but um, it's well worth the money because there's hours of content I'm still adding to it uh, by the way I've also got a jewelry course as well which is a massive course over 90 hours long 360 odd lectures so far and I'm still adding to that as well so definitely check out my website um, courses.mojomojo.design to see all of my courses um, you guys are obviously on this so you're going to be I wanted to do this this beginning section and open it up so that you can um, so it will actually answer the questions that I'm seeing on lots of the any cubic uh, Facebook groups and hopefully this will help you so I know I'm going on and on and on about it but that's what we're gonna do in this section so let's get on with it and let me start to show you the photon s and how i kind of set things up we'll do that in the next lecture 